Okay, well, it's been a little while since I've done a video, and uh, I've had a couple of requests for how to do calibration frames, um, and I just got a kind of a, a newish setup, so I figured I would go ahead and do some of the basic uh, calibration frames uh, with it and show you guys how to do it. So let me uh, turn the camera around here, and I'll show you what I'm up to. All right, so this is my uh, broken on 135 setup, and it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so first, we're going to start with the bias frame. So with the bias frame, you don't want any light getting in there. So uh, there's the lens. Here's the lens cap. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on. And the thing is, you don't want any light getting in there. So we got that on there. All right, and uh, we'll switch over to the tablet here. All righty, so here we are at the tablet, <clears throat> and um, I got that uh, that cap on there, so you shouldn't be seeing anything. And uh, so the first step to do a bias is we go here where it says preview, and we go ahead and select auto run. And we get into auto run, we get into uh, this, and uh, I'll go ahead and reset this to what it would look like without you having anything in there. Okay, and you gotta hit the plus sign and then select bias. And then for exposures, you want the absolute lowest setting that your camera can do. So for this one, it's 0 0.001, go ahead and select that. And then you're gonna want at least 25 uh, sub exposures. So we'll go ahead and we'll do 25. And we'll go ahead and uh, set it for default gain. And we'll hit OK. And we'll go ahead and hit this back arrow up here in the upper left. Okay, and then once we get to that, we go ahead and we hit the Start Taking a Picture button. And it's going to go ahead and take 25 very, very fast pictures. And what this does is it takes the, the noise pattern that's inherent to the sensor and it uh, pretty much creates an image that just shows that noise pattern. And you can see it on the screen right now. And you really don't want that noise in your pictures. So it's a good thing to go ahead and take it out. This is what you're doing with a, with a bias frame. Okay, and now that it's done with that, we go ahead, we go up to, on yours it may see, say SD card or EMMC, whichever one, it's next to the info button, you click that, and then you go to DSO stacking, click that, and you go to where it says master bias on the left, go ahead and click that, and then you're going to click the plus button in the upper right corner. Okay, and then it should automatically be in auto run, and you go ahead and you select all. Okay, and then you click on create in the upper right. Okay, and it's going to create the bias frame. What it's doing is it's stacking those 25 pictures to create a master bias file. Okay, go ahead and click on delete original images, because you're not going to need them after this. And you go ahead and you click OK. <clears throat> and then now you see on there you have a uh, master bias. Uh, it's uh, one millisecond or whatever uh, for the 533. And if you want to see what the master bias looks like, you can go ahead and hit back, go to images management, go to stacked, DSO, master bias. And you can see it right there at the top. And that's what the master bias looks like. Okay? So now we are going to flip over and we are going to do the flat frame, okay? And uh, I'm going to show you how I do it with uh, the, uh, the, the camera, brain fart, sorry about that. So there's many, many different ways on how you do a flat frame. You can do what's called a sky flat, which I don't really do those. Um, if you want to learn how to do that, you can do a different video. Uh, but so I went ahead and I took the lens cap off of the camera. 
Okay. And then I use an LED ske sketch pad I bought off of Amazon. It was like, like, like 15 bucks. Okay. You go ahead and you place that over the lens. Okay. So the problem with my Roki setup is where that is. So, I mean, I'm not going to use the autofocuser, so I can go ahead and unplug that. Then I can put the, the sketch pad right on the lens like that. Okay. And you got to, of course, plug it in. So I have a, a battery bank. I go ahead and I usually, oop, hold on. It did not like that. So we're going to. Tighten the clutch up there, because it was a little bit loose. There we go. See? My dad always accused me of thinking I'm perfect, but I, I make mistakes just like everyone else. Okay. Go ahead and plug that battery in. Plug it into the sketch pad. All right. And then, you want to turn the sketch pad on. Okay, like, like so. And then I like to put mine on the lowest setting possible. So on this one, you do that by hitting the power button and holding it down. It's getting brighter there. Oops. Come on, you stupid thing. Stay put. Okay. There we go. Get it to its absolute lowest setting, okay? And then, <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and we will switch back to the tablet here. Okay, now we're back at the tablet. So it's a very similar process to uh, the way we did the bias frame. So we're still in auto run mode because that's where we were. We're gonna head, go ahead and hit that. And we're gonna click where it says bias, okay? Oh yeah, you gotta reset the progress. So you go in the upper right corner where that little circle is, you hit that, reset the progress, then go ahead and click where it says bias. And now we can go ahead and switch that to flat. And then on exposure, where it says flat, you wanna set that to auto, okay? That's a big thing, you want it on auto. Default gain, you can go ahead and do 25 exposures again. Go ahead and click okay, hit that back arrow, get you back to the main screen here, and then go ahead and hit the start button. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna calculate how long of an exposure it needs to get the histogram at about the halfway mark, okay? And uh, that depends on light brightness, your, you know, how, how fast your optics are and so on. And it's doing that right now. There it goes, it's, it's calculated it, we're good, and this is what my flat frames will look like. It's going to go ahead and it's going to do 25 of those. Now what the flat frame does is it will go ahead and it will take out any dust motes, vignetting, uh, you know, stuff from like light leaks and whatnot, and it's going to be able to subtract those from your final images. Because if I had a final image, you could see how these dust motes are on my screen. That would kind of really seriously affect my image. Now, usually those dust motes are on either your uh, camera lens or they're on your filter. Um, your main objective lens won't necessarily show up on there because it's it's so far away from, you know, the, the focal point that it would just be too big to really cause anything. But it, it never hurts to clean your main objective if it's really dirty. <clears throat> but usually those like the one at the top of the screen here, that's going to be coming off of the uh, the filter or off of the, the lens of the camera. So it's going to take 25 of these and these are going to be a little bit longer exposures usually than than what the bias was. Okay. We're at 17. Let it keep going here. Okay, once it's done with that, you go ahead and you do the same thing. You go up into your memory card, okay? You go to DSO stacking, and this time you go to where it says master flat. Click on that, you go ahead and hit the plus sign. Once again, select all, you go ahead and you click create. And this is easy peasy. 
it's not all that complicated. Okay, and then once it's done stacking those, go ahead and do delete original images because you're not going to need those anymore and it just frees up storage. Go ahead and click OK. And then if you want to see what your final flat frame looks like, you go back, you hit image management, go to stacked, DSO, master flat, and then you can see it there for the 533. Go ahead and click that and it'll load it up and you can see it. And that's not terrible. I have definitely seen worse. And there's my master flat frame. So you can go ahead and you can take that. Uh, you can use it with the uh, the live mode on the ASI Air, or you could take it off of your memory card or uh, off of your storage on the device and go ahead and uh, use it in PixInsight or whatever stacking software you use. And now you've figured out how to do flat frames. Pretty cool, huh? So anyway, open that... Uh that helps someone out, uh, but uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, like I said, I just got this set up here, so um, I also have my Ascar 103, and uh, I haven't really had an opportunity to do any imaging. It was, it was pretty much cloudy all night last night, and I only woke up a little while ago, and I just got up to pretty much do this video, because um, my dad's been having problems with it, so I figured I'd help him out. Uh, but like I said, it's pretty straightforward. I'm hoping tonight I'll be able to uh, do uh, some imaging. I, I want to get some good stuff on the Eagle Nebula uh, with this setup. Um, uh, I've pretty much decided to dedicate my 533 to the Roki setup here. And um, I'm going to use my 2600 uh, primarily with the, the 103. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> but I have, the way I have it now is I have two entirely independent setups. So I'll be able to run them both at the same time. Um, on the 103, I've got the new Mealy Quieter 4 Mini PC, uh, 4C Mini PC. And, um, pretty much just going to be using Nina on that one. Uh, but I'm still going to use the ASI Air Mini on, on the Roku setup because it makes sense. It's lightweight and it gets the job done. And, uh, yeah. So, anyhow, hope you all have a good, uh, good, good session. And this video wound up being helpful for you. And, uh, until next time, uh, clear skies and seven threes. Keep the rubber side down, the shiny side up, all that jazz. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, hopefully I'll make another video before too much longer. Until then, see ya.